Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? In this episode, we're going to be talking about constructors. So it's a really important part of object-oriented programming because anytime we create a new object, we are invoking a constructor. We're going to talk about how they work, how it's different than just a normal method, and how to create variations of the constructor. Now, before we jump into this content, you need to check out who sponsored this video. This video is sponsored by Diff Blue. DiffBlue offers a free AI-powered unit test generation tool for Java developers. DiffBlue writes your unit tests for you and delivers human-readable code to increase your test coverage and speed up your development, while ensuring you didn't break anything along the way. With a free community edition available as an IntelliJ plugin, DiffBlue is super easy to get started with. Best of all, as a viewer of my channel, you can get a free license upgrade to automatically write tests for either open source or commercial code. Get started using the link below. So yeah, do me a favor and check out them. They're pretty cool. And now we're gonna talk about constructors. So this right here is known as the default constructor. Anytime we create a class, the default constructor is automatically gonna be there. We don't even have to type anything out. So that is why it's cool, you know? We don't gotta do any extra work. There's nothing in this user class that shows a default constructor. So the, the problem is when we want to basically have some way of, let's say, passing in the name and the membership when we create the user, so everything is done at once. Well, how would that look? Well, it might look like this. Having an argument here, Caleb, comma, and then the membership, which again, because we did some method overloading in the previous episode, we could just use a string here, such as silver. And then we can just get rid of these two lines and make our code a whole lot cleaner. And you will see code like this a lot when you're programming. But you can see when we do this, it doesn't work. The constructor user string string is undefined. So it's looking for a constructor that takes two strings, but it's not defined. So the easiest thing to do is just create the constructor and it's just going to build out a method here. So a constructor is just a method, but there's one difference in that there is no return type. So you can see here, it's just public user. Oh, and another thing is it has to match the class name exactly, but there's no return type like other methods where this one has void and this one has a string. You don't have to do that for constructors. So basically what we need to do now is we need to set the names to the different attributes. So go ahead and pause this video and set those attributes. All right, now that you're done setting those attributes, I'm hoping you did not do this. Underscore name is equal to, oh, and you might want to give these better names. Let's say name and membership. What I'm hoping you didn't do is underscore name is name and underscore membership is membership. And why would this be a problem? Well, honestly, it's not that big of a problem. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, tch go back to first grade. But the problem here is that we're accessing these attributes directly. And even though we're in that class, it's really not smiled upon to do this access in numerous locations, because we basically need to always go through the getter and the setter. So the proper way to do this is to actually just invoke those methods. So we would say set name and pass in name, and then we would set the membership the same way. So set membership, membership. And that should work the same way, but then if we went and changed some of that functionality, you know, we don't have to go and change that in numerous locations, possibly introducing bugs if we forget to do it somewhere. So this is the purest form of encapsulation. Awesome, so now we should be able to run our main code. Let's just check it out. Oh, we're still getting some issue. The constructor user is undefined. What? Okay, I just saved it and that error went away. I don't know, I swear. Eclipse is a little tipsy sometimes. So what we should be able to do now is we should be able to run our code and it should work exactly the same way. And it does. So when would you want to do this? Well, one, if you want to make the code easier to read, you can do it this way. So now, instead of having three lines, we only have one line. The other really important thing is that we can do this to require certain things when we create a user, which this is probably the better use, not just for clean code, but for proper code. For example, a user might not be valid without a name or a membership type. So if you don't want those half created objects floating around in your code, then you can basically force that data to be required using a, a custom constructor. So that's the big thing. 
in my opinion, is you use constructors to force proper data. But what if you don't really care? You know, if people want to use the default constructor, that's fine. If they want to use the custom constructor, that's fine too. Well, you're going to run into an issue because if you go down here and you try to create a new user, we'll just call it U2, and then say, not like the band guys, like just a second user. Well, now we're getting an error. What used to work is now broken. The constructor user without anything is undefined. What the fudge? <laughs> we need to fix this. So the reason that happens is because of that previous thing I mentioned about if you want to force data be to be passed in, well, then we don't want people to be able to use that default constructor. So if you create a custom constructor, that default one is obliterated and it no longer exists. So it's not going to create it by default anymore. It's not going to be assumed. So if we want both, we actually have to define that default one. So we just say public user, nothing in the parameter list, and nothing in the curly braces. Now you can also use this spot to assign default values. So you could say set name and you know say something like no value or whatever you want. But a better place to do that is actually probably up here. You can use default values here. So maybe no value, but that'd be stupid to do for the name. So maybe for the membership, you can default it to bronze, for example. That's just an example, and I'm getting off topic. Basically, you can do whatever you want in that default constructor. You don't have to leave it empty. The only thing that really matters is that there's nothing in that parameter list, and now our code should work. And based off of this, you too should have a bronze membership. So let's say you too dot get name and you too dot get membership. You can see that the name should be null and the membership is bronze.